Ladies and gentlemen, there she is. I look, I look forward to this. I really do. I, I, <laughs> You're wearing the same hat you did last time. Yeah, I, uh, I have a shirt to that extent under this. It's a really nice shirt, about 1939. You know. But uh, anyway, I uh, yeah, listen to me. I'm, I can't. I can barely talk. I may not do a show tonight. This may have to run on Thursday because I'm. Uh, I've got laryngitis really bad. Anyway. So does that mean I should do all the talking? Well, you always do it. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Yeah. So uh, uh, and how you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah. Uh, we had Thanksgiving. Yeah. What'd you do? I went to my son's house in Salem, Oregon. Yeah. And they way did big food. There were lots of people and big food. There was a piece of salmon like this and a prime rib too. No turkey. Yeah, no turkey. Now, uh, this is interesting. This is still hard for you to say that, my son. I mean, yes, you know, yes, because it is. I, I feel funny about it. I mean, I'm just, you know, you just want to identify somebody when you're having a conversation. And I always almost trip over that part because, and it took me a long time to, it's been a couple of years since we met. And I think the problem is, is I just don't get being, having a son when I didn't raise that person. Yeah. You know, I think you earn motherhood or fatherhood. And I didn't. I mean, it's just this full-grown person with a whole life showed up, you know. Yeah. So saying my son is, yeah, I, it, it's yeah. Not, it doesn't come naturally to me. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can't because, and you never, you for years you just put your son out of your mind. Although maybe every now and then you would think back to him or whatever, where he might be and <clears throat> whatever. See, and all of I a sudden, didn't do the work of raising him. Right. You know, I didn't go through all the times kids get sick and you worry about them or they're doing well in school or they're not doing well in school. And all the stuff that kids go through, I don't know anything about that. I have no knowledge. I am ignorant. <laughs> and and that's, that's what makes you a mother or a father, having been there through all that stuff. Yeah. And I never did. So I, in one respect, I feel like an imposter when I say that. What kind of word could we attach to it rather than mother or parent? Because really, it, it, it's an interesting thing that you gave this child up at birth, and then all of a sudden here, how many years later, 78, 79 years later? No, 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 not quite that many, more like 55 or 6. <laughs> oh, well, excuse me, yeah. yeah. But he, pop, he pops back, he pops into your life. Yes. And and all of a sudden you have to readjust your thinking about yourself and about your yes, life. Yes, I, I hadn't thought to put it that way, but you're absolutely right. And what does it mean? And it's not a relationship that we much recognize. Every once in a while there's something in a movie about tracking down a parent, you know, yeah. a, a, and that's the most we know about it, I think, from dramatic points of view in movies or TV shows, and that we don't really have a pl cultural place for biological parents. Yeah, yeah. They, especially biological parents who didn't raise the child. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, um, uh, it, it's a weird kind of situation that you have. Uh, but nevertheless, um, I had, you know, I had a kid too, uh, if you may remember. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, and and uh, it was given up for adoption, mm -hmm. and uh, I always wondered about it. And there was a time <clears throat> when I was working in San Francisco, and I had a blessed amount of money. I thought about finding this kid uh, because again, he went into blind adoption, which is probably what happened with you, where you, it's hard for you to find out where the kid went. Uh, and I was going to hire a detective to go do it to go look him up or to see if he could find the kid. And then I decided not to because I decided it was the kid's job to find me if he wanted to. But for me to suddenly pop into his life would be ups more upsetting to his life than him popping into mine. Does that make sense? Sure. It's whatever you feel makes sense. Um, it wasn't something I thought would ever happen because I was told 
that the records were sealed. Yeah. And that then that was that, that um, they wouldn't be able, nobody, he wouldn't be able to find me or, I don't know, I've forgotten all the ramifications. Yeah. But yeah. the point was, I went through my life thinking that there was no way. And, and when I thought about him, it, that's the way it should be. He had a family. Yeah, that's Those right. Those were his parents because they did the work of raising him and loving him and taking care of him and all of that. So I was really quite shocked in the beginning. It wasn't anything I ever expected. Yeah, well, also... I, I was totally unprepared. I, I had no idea. I mean, what do you say? And um, Although, you know, I have to say that, you know, this happened because of those DNA ancestry type tests. Yeah. And I got an email from him. I thought it was so incredibly wonderful that his first sentence... Um, that it was sent to me via that website. They don't hand out email mm. addresses. Yeah. Um, and the first sentence was, Dear Ms. Bennett, apparently you and I are intimately related. <laughs> what a great sentence. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, in spite of the fact that all these things are sealed and so on, this new DNA these new DNA companies have put people together who are parents to, a, to kids and whatever, you know. Um, but well, I, you know, I mean, with, with me, it's worked out quite nicely. But I can imagine that it wouldn't, that there would be parents who gave their child up for adoption and went on to have a whole other life and depending on what it is, would not be shocked in a good way. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I think that that's, I mean, so, no, I've never seen it discussed anywhere publicly, um, but I think that it has to have happened, you know, and then what? Yeah. I don't... Well, you know, I mean, uh, my kid uh, would be somewhere around his early 60s, I think, at this point, you know. Uh, I, I, figure, I I think he's Howard Stern, actually, uh, but I'm not sure, no. But it, 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 I don't know. I just, every now and then I do think about it. You know, and wonder. Can't not, I don't yeah, suppose. Yeah, you know? but you know, and I had no control over the situation. Um, she was, the, she had the ultimate choice to make of giving up the child. As well, she should. It's, it's not you carrying a baby. Well, I tried to. I tried to. What do you mean you tried to? <laughs> no, I tried to say I'll adopt the child. I'll take the child on, and I wasn't allowed to. You know, I had no well, say so. I'm not so sure about you being a single father. I really am not. <laughs> uh, I think I would have been okay. You know, I wanted it enough that I would have made it work. But I wouldn't, I don't think I would have had the life I've had. I think I would have been strapped to uh, raising a child and, and, and taking mm -hmm. jobs and leaving jobs considering the best thing for the child, you know, so where I spent my whole life not having to worry about those things and being able to make my own decisions, you know, so what have you, you know. But that's that's wonderful that you found that. You know. Speaking of... By the way, is he a Republican or a Democrat? Oh, I don't think I should speak for him. <laughs> we get along, let's put it that oh, way. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking of relationships, yeah. Um, after our last recording, yeah, one of the comments left. It, it, it seemed to be particularly so last time. Was had, had anybody ever told me that I look like Shirley MacLaine? And then I got two or three emails to the same effect. That those people seemed to think that I wouldn't want that mentioned publicly or something, uh. and. I don't think I do. I look at myself now. I don't see anything. But in my 30s and 40s, maybe a little into my 50s, I just want to tell you the story. Yeah. Um, I did look a lot like Shirley MacLaine, so much so that even I could see it. It wasn't, I didn't think it was anything like you would say, oh, that's Shirley MacLaine. It was just a mild resemblance. It was the essence of Shirley MacLaine. Well, hardly the essence of it. I'll, I'll, I'll let her have that. But... Um, but every once in a while, someone would stop and say, you're Shirley MacLaine. And no, 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 I'm not Shirley MacLaine. So I was working at a TV show, and the offices were in, in near Rockefeller Center. Right. And it was a rotten, miserable winter day, and I was 
So we decided with a friend of mine, Carol, to go to lunch, you know, underneath um, the street there is a whole shopping area and restaurants and all kinds of things and subway stops. So we could get to the basement there and walk through without having to get wet in the crappy weather there was that day. So we're going along, and it's lunch hour in Rockefeller Center. So even in the middle of winter, you know, there's crowds and crowds and crowds of people. And we're working our way through. We were meeting some friends at the restaurant. And a woman came over and pointed at me, and she said, you're Shirley McLean. And I said, no, 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 no. I know I kind of look like her, but I'm not Shirley McLean. And she said, oh, yes, you are. Now two or three other people. <laughs> Next thing I know, there's a whole crowd. And all these women are, they're women mostly. And they're fishing in their bags for a pen or a piece of paper or something for me to sign. And I keep saying, no, 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 I'm not sure I'm kind I promise you. I just kind of look like her, not completely. Yeah. And they go, no, 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 come on. I want you to sign this autograph for us and all that. Finally, Carol, do you remember that show? I've forgotten the name. The Nanny. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Nanny was from Queens and she had a heavy Queens accent. Right. My friend Carol was like that. She was... I think she was the nanny, the accent, the colorful clothes, everything. So I'm going on and on. No, 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 I'm not really Shirley McLean. She finally elbows me and says, Shirley, sign them. We are late for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so there are half a dozen people who have signatures that are my signature of Shirley McLean. But I was surprised because I thought I was long past looking like her to other people. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just that. <clears throat> I think it's amazing uh, that these people didn't take your word for the fact that you weren't <laughs> and, and I understood the resemblance, but then right up close, you would, I didn't think you would ever mistake me for Shirley McLean. I mean, it was just this, you know, just like a shadow over well, somebody's why, face. Why would Shirley McLean, like why would Shirley McLean so adamantly deny that she was Shirley McLean? <laughs> You know. <laughs> and so, there you go. Yeah. That's my story for the day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, it's you know, um, uh, I um, I have a cold, folks. Uh, all right, don't have a cold anymore. This is what happens. Do you remember I used to get laryngitis after a cold? No, oh. but then I wasn't probably paying close attention. You yeah. forget you're a hypochondriac after a while if you're around you too much. You just kind of let it all go and flow past you because there's always something with you. Yeah, but now I have cancer. <laughs> Jesus. See, I told you I had something. You weren't listening. <laughs> all these years. Yeah, all yes. these years. <laughs> you Funny. Know, well, I, you know, I, I, you know, I have this as my part of my hypochondria. This, this thing that says, okay, what is it that's going to kill me? You know, something's out there lurking. Every morning I wake up. Why I, would you do that? I feel the Grim Reaper standing in back of me with his scythe and his hood going, well, not today, but we're thinking of something. You know? You know the appointment in Samara story? What? No. Do you know the story of the appointment in Samara? No. Oh, it, it's an old, old tale. I mean, thousands and thousands of years old. And I'm going to get maybe the relationships a little wrong. But, um... Uh, but a man is walking around in the marketplace, and um, and death walks by and uh, does a double take, looking at him. And I'm, you know, I'm going to mix up this story. It's too bad. And I just recently ran it on my website. And um, it anyway, the point is is that death is surprised to see that guy in that marketplace. Uh, in, because he knows that he's coming to get him that night mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be in Samara and this is in another town. <laughs> and the guy <laughs> had heard about death being after him and so he went to Samara mm. to avoid it and there death was. Oh. But, and I've got it backwards, I'm pretty sure, but it's the general idea. You, you're not going to escape yeah. this, whatever causes it. Yeah. But anyway, you know, so you wonder what what is it what is it's going to get me, you know? And, and the doctor says the cancer I've got isn't going to get me. So uh, the question is, what is? You know, I, I have my heart. And in are good you shape. still getting up every morning asking yourself that question? I'm going to be a hundred years old and be a hypochondriac. Okay, 
you know. Do you understand that it doesn't really do you any good because it's so common with you, it's so everyday, that pretty soon anyone around you just tunes it all out? Yeah, but I and it drives my wife nuts. It well, really it drove this wife nuts, yeah, too. Uh, yeah. Uh, we should get all my ex-wives. And how many were in between us? We should get we should get all my ex-wives together, and they can talk about what got them nuts about me. Uh, and you would all agree on the hypochondria. That would definitely be uh, well, hard to miss. Hard to miss, yeah. But uh, anyway, you know. So see, listen, I, my voice. This is so much fun. I'm getting. I sound like T- Mel Torme. There's an old reference. Um. Anyway, so. Uh, you, uh, you know, you. I'm, I look at you, and you look terrific. You know, I mean, you for somebody with cancer and COPD. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I mean, uh, well, how long was it ago that you got that? Uh, the doctor saying, "Well, you've, you've got, you've got inoperable cancer." Okay, that was, that was a, two and a half years ago. No, that was pancreatic cancer, wasn't it? Two yes. and a half. But I'm talking about. Re, the recent thing where you, you thought everything was gone, and then you got a report, and they said you have inoperable cancer. Oh, they, nobody ever said it was gone. They said that the scan, they couldn't see anything on the scan. Oh, okay. And that's a big difference. Oh, okay. But when, and when, and when, that when, given the kind of cancer it is, chances are it's not going anywhere, you know? Uh, yeah. And uh, so, you know, it's growing, but very slowly. So, I mean... The bigger problem day-to-day life is COPD. Much bigger problem. Yeah, yeah. You, um, that I, I, We were talking before you started recording that, you know, I'm, I'm, I just recently had a realization that I've got to pay attention to that I walk as fast as I used to and then I can't get my breath and I'm heaving to get my breath. I have to do everything slower. And I just, I haven't quite convinced myself, even though it's been several months, that that's how it is. That's how you live now and that's get the, over it and just do it. As they say, that's the new normal. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so I'm, you know, it's it's hard, I mean, especially, you know, I mean, you still live in New York. Um, you walk, When you walk down the street, you really walk pretty fast or you get people stumble over yeah. you and push you aside or something. And I still forget now and again and walk that quickly. And then, you know, after a few steps, I can't get my breath. So, and just, I just, you know, you've got to make yourself understand this is different now and it's not ever going to change. Right. Right. Um, I, um, um, yeah. Uh, So, I mean, you know, it's just uh, at, at our age, you do find you have things that you have to live with as your, as your new normal. Uh, and I'm probably gonna... it's that at what, what I'm finding is that even though I understand that intellectually and I'm not fighting it, it's because I, it's irreversible. You can right. only control it to a degree. I understand that. I get it. I'm not arguing with that. I understand. But I'm not behaving that way yet. You know, automatically. I, I, have, I have a friend who does was doing interviews like you're doing with me on Skype for the show. He's a comedian named Will Durst. <clears throat> who's a comic. And he got word uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, about a couple of months ago, I tried to call him, and he didn't answer the phone. And I kept trying and trying and trying, and then I did a few other things. Finally, his wife gets a hold of me. I call, I call him at, at home, and then his wife answers, and she says, he had a stroke last night. Well, he had a stroke, which... In, has kind of like ruined his ability to talk and paralyzed, I think, his right side. And I'm thinking to myself, what would I rather have? You know, something How like, did you know? these things even occur well, no, to you to I think, don't think I would not want a stroke. I think that's, the wor- that's worse than just about anything because especially if you're a performer, it takes away, it just sucks away the very essence of what you do. You know, well, that's anyone. You don't have to be a performer. Well, I, I especially a performer. I mean, I don't. Okay. I don't agree. Let's say you can't talk, but let's say you. Uh, I don't know. You're good at some of your violinists. You can still play. You know, or something like that. He's a comedian. He needs his ability to talk, and you know, he's a writer. Needs his ability to write. 
You know, I I just I just said, I, I thank God I've got what I've got as opposed to what he's got. Well, you know, I thought I had cancer. Now I have cancer and COPD, so you never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know what you'll get next. <laughs> That's your buffet, huh? Cancer and <laughs> COPD. <laughs> Uh, you know, the thing is that it's so far, it will change in time. It's the COPD that's harder to live with, than the, except that I absolutely must take certain pills at certain times of day. Beyond that, I wouldn't know I have cancer. Where the and hell? It's the COPD the hell? Wait, that takes up all my time. Where the hell did you get COPD? I quit smoking years ago. <coughs> oh. I grew up in a home that both parents smoked, so essentially from birth I was smoking. Yeah. Um, plus, I was. It's funny. I just ran across a general interest article about COPD a couple of days ago. Yeah. And it was a lot of people get it from bad air. The air pollution is causes a lot of COPD too. Wow. And um, anything that affects your breathing, people that work with chemicals and don't protect their faces and so on. I was reading your blog the other day, and you had some article, and I loved it, and then I've completely forgotten which one it was, uh, but it was just something you did in the last couple of days. And was it the one about um, not to, what What did I do on Monday? I don't remember. It might, and it might have been Monday, too. You know. It must have been Monday. Tuesday was a reader, yeah. um, a reader just, story, and today is the... Um, Oh, the story in the Washington Post, a story about a book of a British photographer who'd taken a lot of photographs of his very, very old mother and done a book of them. And it, they showed a half a dozen of the photographs and the Washington Post writer had recently visited his very old mother. So he had some interesting takes on that. And then I rarely read comments except on my own blog uh, because mostly they're nasty and mean. I mean, just like that's the point of people going online or something. Um, and it was a mixed bag on the story. But several people said, oh, my God, how to, what a terrible thing that he took pictures of his mother in that state. What? And another one said, I hope to God my children don't take pictures of me when I look like that. What is wrong with them? <laughs> yes, well, that's what I said in the story, but that's not the one, huh? No, that's not the one. It was, uh, let me see here, I'm looking at your blog. Uh, my $45,000 a month collection oh, right. This, I thought, was a great piece of writing, where in which you talk about your COPD and the fact that your inhaler is costing you $45,000 a month. <laughs> That was according to the Medicare website. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out, I didn't know this, that I knew it was a mistake. It took a lot of phone calls before I found someone who could help me out with that. But as it turns out, since then, mm -hmm. um, there are a whole lot of articles on how bad the website is where you can select your Part D drug, you know, your new one for each year or... Yeah. Medicare Advantage or whatever yeah. that you need to check again, and it's it's they you know Medicare keeps telling all the reporters who call that they that they check the site you know and tested it before they the new site before they put it up, but all oh, thousands of people are having trouble so much so that some people have shut down their helplines because there's just no way to do it. Right. So many right. things wrong. So, I don't know. I'd like to blame Trump, but I don't suppose either. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not cheap of being sick. Uh, and, uh, but thank God there are other people paying for it. So, you know. And, you well, know. we're paying for it through well, our taxes. Well, I'm, I'm sure I, on my, on my uh, whatever treatment I have to go through, I'm going to have one, a fairly decent copay, you know. I mean, um, it just it, the, the copay is what I don't get now. It used to be there was never a copay between your Medicare and your secondary. It took care of everything, and now you got a copay. So I don't know. I just I don't I don't understand it. Life. life well, I don't I don't think that 
Medicare was ever meant to be free, but it should be reasonable. Right. But all I'm saying is that between the secondary and the Medicare, it took, I didn't ever pay anything. And now mm-hmm. I get bills for these, you know, these small amounts, so $25 here, $25 there for the copay. And you go, fuck you, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm old. I need to be taken care of, you know. I, I paid into the society. Leave me alone. Give me a break. Shepherds you know when I there. felt like that once, and I understand, you have to know to understand this, is that my apartment came completely carpeted, Okay. And I was had a big bundle of clean clothes I'd just taken out of the dryer, and I was carrying them into the bedroom to fold up everything. And I guess and a, a sheet was dragging on the floor, and I tripped on it and fell down. Skid, I didn't skin my knee, but oh, my God, did it really hurt. Both of my elbows hurt. Everywhere seemed to hurt, and I just lay there. And all I could think of was, why isn't there someone here to help me? <laughs> uh, let's, I want to look and see how old Shirley MacLaine is. She's 85 years old. So she's got seven years on me. Yeah, I was going to say that if she was the same age as you, you look better today than she does. But I, I think she looks perfectly fine. She looks, she looks old, but she... And so do I. But not good, good old. Yeah, and you yeah. look a good old. And she's still getting work. That's terrific. I, I look like a rotting corpse, but that's another oh, story. Jeez, <laughs> are we going to end on that note? Oh well, yeah, I like I so. I'll always end on a on a on a big number. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you have a birthday coming up? Yes, I do. Yeah. Oh, you're not. Are you going to ignore it? Well, I'm not going to ignore it. I can't ignore it. It creeps up on me anyway. You know, uh, but I'm uh, I'm going to be 80 next month. And, That's uh, a big one. Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah. You know, every time I, I worry about, you know, let me just say this quickly because we're running over. Ah, right, fuck. There's no such thing as running over. It's the Internet. Screw That's running right. over. There's always more room on the Internet. You know. Uh, I, uh, I, the other day, I... I I came to the most, the best, you love the, the mindset I got into about this cancer thing. I said, why do I have it? And I was reading about it, and it said, basically, people who get to be older, they have a higher incidence of prostate cancer. It's part of getting old. And I said, this is because I'm 80. You know, if I had died at 75, I would have never gotten it. So what's the trade-off here, you know? The good news is I made it to 80, and I made it to the age where I'm going to get something like that, and they'll take well, care of it. Even more important is those extra years from average to now yeah. is that you've been relatively healthy and been able to live the life you want to live. That's right. So, you know, I mean, so I'll go through this. It'll be a little annoying. It'll, uh, uh, you know, take the female hormones and start to cry a lot and get, uh, I hear men get... Uh, what what is it? The heat thing? The uh, uh, heat wave? Uh, what uh, is uh, hot flash? Hot flashes. Um, grow a little. It's too long ago for me. I can't remember my, the my, name. My breast <laughs> may gr- my breast may grow a little bit. I may gain some weight from the hormones if I but they if I stop taking them, everything reverses itself. So and it's not permanent. So and uh, the radiation, which I'd like to go through the faster radiation rather than the longer radiation, and. And once that's over, I'm home free, you know, and uh, hopefully uh, it won't reoccur and I'll be I'll be fine. And something else is going to get me so I can still be a hypochondriac. Oh, that's the part you don't want to lose. I huh? don't want to lose it. <laughs> you want, enjoy it. I want my tombstone to read. See, I told you I was sick. Just you know. How about just I told you so. I told you so. A little more subtle. <laughs> hey, dear, we've run over, but I love running over with you. This is Ronnie Bennett. And she has timegoesby.net, a blog which you should read about getting to be all the cacas. And um, uh, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. It'll, and you'll already be 80 by then. <laughs> no, not. No, no. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You're right. Yep. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.